So this is how we're going to use them. Um, basically, we have this custom glass top that we got cut. Uh, it's laser cut tempered glass, uh, so it's very strong. Um, and then we needed to be able to rest the glass on top of something. So, but the, the barrels were a little bit too short for uh, for our for our chairs, so our knees were kind of hitting the glass. So what we what I did is I took calipers and I measured the top and I measured the bottom of this. And then I got the top width, and I got the bottom width, and then I made a little diagram, made everything symmetrical. And then in SolidWorks, I was able to take this and extrude out from that along the length in a circle, along an arc, right? And then that's what created this 3D object, basically, right? I made this, this A shape and then pushed it up. And then that's what I put into my printer, and now it gave us these things that you know, have a pretty nice snug fit. So this is the filament we use. It's the uh, company is called Hatchbox. Um, it's wood grain PLA. Um, so yeah, it's it's not quite as it's not really plastic. It's, it's got all these wood fibers in it, and it use everything's pretty normal. We got the steel the steel nozzle because it's a little harsher that uh, you know, a little rougher. So from one of these spools, I was able to make two of these and have quite a bit left over. So, you know. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Couldn't make quite three of these, I don't think, so I, I would just do two each. I'll make other things with them, though. So the first thing that has to happen here is the uh, heat bed and the hot end have to come up to temperature. So you can see them, this, uh, the Prussia uh, printer here, the heat bed, will, will heat up, which lets, um, improves the adhesion of materials to it. And uh, then this hot end right here, where it melts the filament, is going to come and that has to heat up as well so you can see the temperatures here are heating up. So this right here is a brass uh, nozzle that I used. This is the original one that came with it. I replaced it with a steel one. Um, it's uh, what actually does the printing and this this one's, a, this one's softer, it's brass, so the steel one lets me do the wood grain filament without damaging it and lets me do things like uh, glow-in-the-dark PLA as well. I think it's almost heated up, so it's going to start doing a bed leveling thing right now. So one feature of the Prussia that's different than others, it has this automatic bed leveling exercise it does every single time, where it calibrates the sensor in all the different uh, areas of the bed to, uh, to calibrate it. Now I, I had to extra calibrate it with uh, these correction tools, and you can move it 10 microns or 1 micron at a time, they super recommend 10. Uh, and now it's going to start the print. So just to make sure the first layer adheres very well, uh, I, I reduced the first layer speed to 5 millimeters a second. So it's going to go quite slow right now. Um, on this first part, it's just going to make a little skirt, a little, a little line around the object that we're going to print. And then it's going to print within that, within that little line. Another thing about these printers, um, so I got the kit. The kit was uh, a few hundred dollars cheaper. It was $759, I believe. And the non-kit one comes assembled uh, from Prussia itself. Prussia itself, and um, it, it's uh, it's more expensive. But I, I wanted I wanted to learn how to make it. I wanted to learn how to put it together. So I put this entire thing together on my kitchen table, and I saved a few hundred dollars. It did take a very long time. To put together and it, but it wasn't super challenging and the instructions are amazing from Prusa as well as the hair about they give you gummy bears to make you feel good about yourself when you complete things but I, I, I ate all of the gummy bears um, before I completed anything <laughs> so now it's pretty much done with the little outline and like I said I, I put the, the first layer speed down to five millimeters a second so when the first uh, layer is done, then it's going to speed up quite a bit. You'll see in the video later, it's going to just start to move a lot faster. I just don't, it, the, the problem with printers sometimes is that it won't adhere to the bottom and it will lift up. And then if it doesn't stick um, on that first layer, it, it doesn't then, it, you know, it, it's going to destroy the whole print. So I like to set it really slow. A 
although I've calibrated the printer a lot better now, so I think maybe I can start to experiment and speed that up a little bit. But it's not uh, it's not worth it to blow a print if, just to get the first layer, you know, fast. Um, because it's, it's if you can see on the display there, this is a 16-hour print. It's going to take some time to make it. So the first layer doesn't really take that much. It's probably just going to add a half hour on to like slow it down. Make sure you get that first layer in really solid, and then everything's going to be pretty good afterwards. So this is the first, the very first layer of my uh, object here that I'm printing. I'm printing a riser for my bar, and this is going to be the top. But to fit it in, I had to actually put the uh, riser on uh, backwards to be able to fit it into the space. And so there's the outer the outer edge and it's just going to keep doing what it does and it's going to fill that in and then it's going to start uh, creating an infill. So for the infill I only put it on 10% um, because I don't really need it to be strong on the inside. But what I did do is, because it's wood grain PLA and I want to sand the walls of it and then I want to stain stain the wood on the, because there's actually wood fibers in the, in the PLA. Um, so I made the I made the walls of the of the object twice as thick, so I can sand it down a bit and get a nice smooth surface, and then I can stain it, and then I'm going to varnish it, and hopefully it's going to look a lot nicer once it's stained and varnished. So here's a top view of the print that we're making. Again, this is this is the actual top that it's going to print off first, and then it's going to come back out um, and, and get larger. So to fit this, I designed this in, uh, in SolidWorks. Um, and yeah, I, I designed this myself on, in basically in a CAD program. And it, it was quite challenging to, uh, to, make the CAD, to make it work. I needed a, a little help from my friend who's a pro. He's really, really good at it. So he helped me out. And uh, yeah, no, I'm quite, quite happy with the results. We'll try to film it here, but when it finishes this first layer, it's going to pick up the full speed again, and uh, yeah, it'll be a lot, quite a bit faster. You'll see the real performance of how how quick it goes. It doesn't go quick; 3D printers are slow, but uh, it's a lot faster than this. It's going to pick up pretty soon. It'll in this corner. And then it'll So now it's going top speed. do the outer edge and now it's going to go and jump to the infill and start doing the crisscrosses. Oh this isn't the grid actually, this is going to be, so this is doing the uh, a second layer because I, I doubled the layers to make the walls of the, of the object thicker. So this is just going to fill this in and make it about, about a millimeter thick. So you can see it making the infill pattern here. It's uh, putting it right down on top of that first layer. And uh, I did it like 5 or 10 percent. So it's not it's not very thick. It's uh, really really wide, but uh, we don't we don't need it to be super super thick on the inside. I made the walls thicker so it can for the strength. So yeah, you'll see it's going to start crisscrossing now after it's done another edge. So now you can see it doing the crisscross right here, making the grid. It's a super precision instrument. I really. Uh, 
I'm really impressed. It's super high quality. We're just going to do another edge. And then it'll do more crisscrossing after that. You can see it's really starting to take more shape now, getting a lot bigger. Now it's like at the top, getting to the top layer, so it's going to start closing the print on the middle right here. Which you can see right here. So the middle's been closed off. Sides here. Closed off a bit. Just like that. Does take a long time, <laughs> but it's so precise. Okay, so it's finished. That took 15 hours and 58 minutes. Do you want to start over? <laughs> Take it off, you just sort of take this spring steel sheet and you just pop. There we go. We have a perfect object. <laughs>